Hey everybody, have you ever had anxiety crop up at the beginning or the ending of a drawing? Well today I'm going to talk to you about that and some strategies to deal with it. And I'm going to draw this beautiful lady while I'm doing that. This is Scarlet Sage. The link will be in the description to her Instagram. Now I'm in Art Rage 6 and one of the cool things about that program is the brush designer and you can just basically it allows you to create specific digital brushes and effects that aren't part of art rage's traditional system it's really flexible and it allows you to just get in there and create a brush specifically for you you can mess around with the opacity the taper length the dab spacing the jitter um loading grain amount and just you can test it out on this canvas right there. And then um, you can save the color. And so I find this to be very powerful. And then the way you save it is just click the menu up at the top right, give it a name, and then click the add to toolbox if you want it in your toolbox. If not, it'll just save it in the presets. But I find having it in the toolbox allows me to get it real quick at my fingertips for easy access. So the first thing I'm going to do in this drawing is just create a map. I'm going to space and place the elements, make sure that they're in the correct relationship to each other and start from general to the specific, the big stuff, and then to the smaller and smaller refining facets. Then I'm going to do a clean line drawing. After that, I'll find the graphic design with some thumbnails and then I'll separate the darks from the lights and then basically I'll paint and render until I'm finished. All right, now getting to the anxiety that can come up at the beginning or even at the ending of drawings, I find that there's a lot of hemming and hawing about just fretting for me. Kind of like a dog circles around and around before laying down or better yet, like someone who's about to bungee jump and it's not as bad as that, but there's definitely resistance to beginning a project. Maybe that's a better way to put it. And then once I get going, it's okay. But it's that initial cold feeling, uncomfortable, and I have to just go get a coffee or think more or check my email. And I think for me, it has to do with having an unrealistic standard. You guys have probably, you're all familiar with this, I'm sure. So this is kind of a perfectionistic attitude that I had that goes back to childhood. Let's say from six years old to 14 years old, my dad was the coach for both the basketball and baseball teams when I was in school. And he was a harsh taskmaster who expected me to perform at a really high level. If I didn't, he basically punished me by yelling at me and making me practice when I didn't want to. We would go out before the season would start and we would just be me and him and he would do batting practice. And I remember telling him one day, I don't wanna do this, why are we here? And he just made me stay there and do batting practice. So. I ended up feeling like I wasn't good enough because I could never meet his expectations. He wasn't the kind to give positive strokes and encouragement. So even though I've forgiven him after lots of soul work, I ended up internalizing that voice for many years and treating myself the way he treated me. Everything has an upside and a downside. So the upside to all this was that I had really high standards. And the downside was that I had really high standards. Let me explain. I expected a lot from myself because I couldn't tolerate failure and the feelings that came with it because of how my dad treated me. Instead of welcoming failure and seeing it as a stepping stone in the learning process, I used it as a kind of weapon against myself. Since I didn't want to fail at any cost, this critical voice would drive me harder and harder to perform 
even if it wasn't realistic because I didn't have a realistic sense or realistic standard in my mind, probably because my dad didn't provide me with one. But if I didn't succeed, there was all this shame attached to that. And I'd feel really bad about myself. The only thing I could do to keep the critical messages at bay was to try harder. I had no other voice and no other reference point. I had internalized my dad's voice and I'd become a bad parent to myself. So that explains why I feel all this resistance to starting a drawing or a project because there's a lot riding on it for me. The upside to having high standards is that you're always out of your comfort zone and that tends to lead toward upward movement. It also meant that I developed a lot of discipline. To be an artist, you have to concentrate for long periods of time doing small things over and over again and oftentimes by yourself. It can be lonely and demanding, so you need that discipline to keep you going when it gets tough. So that's the positive aspect of it. So this creeps in at the end of a drawing too, when it's time to finish and bring it to a conclusion. In my mind, it's never quite good enough. And what if, God forbid, someone saw that I did a bad drawing? Admittedly, sometimes it's because I really don't know how to resolve some parts of a drawing, and that's legitimate. But other times, it's more an unconscious reaction to the inner critic that won't let the drawing go because of some arbitrary perfectionistic belief that everything I do has to be great. That's a pretty heavy burden. It causes me to, to stall and go around in circles instead of simply concluding and moving on. No one's perfect all the time, let alone ever. So this can really get in the way at times of both beginning and ending a drawing. And this stuff doesn't help the learning process one little bit. I mean, you can make progress, but it's slow going and all it does is make you irritated and unhappy most of the time. Over the years, I've reparented myself and developed a kinder internal voice that's not so harsh and critical. The old voice is still there, but it's much more accepting of my humanity and vulnerability. So it has an encouraging and forgiving quality to it now. So the internal conditions that I work under are a bit more realistic these days. It's accepting and kind towards that little kid in me. I let myself take breaks more often and let myself fail. My self-talk is more encouraging and I'm just not a merciless taskmaster to myself. One big thing that helped me was decoupling my identity from my performance. This had the benefit of learning to get more comfortable with failure and even sometimes welcoming it. It was a great relief to know that I didn't have to be perfect anymore. I wouldn't die or somebody wouldn't like me if I failed. Rather, it really is a key to healthy and even enjoyable forward progress. This minimizes pride and insecurity in me and replaces it with more humility most of the time. And it's made me more understanding of others for sure. A helpful tip that I've found to confront my inner critic is to confront it directly. When the internal critic says, you suck and are lame because this drawing is a mess, I can counter it with a reality check. For example, in response, I could say, sometimes my drawings suck and sometimes they don't, or it doesn't make me a bad person and I'm gonna continue anyway, or maybe I'm terrible now, but failure isn't final and I'm going to honor myself and the learning process and give myself permission to fail a lot and learn to love it. These kinds of statements let your subconscious and conscious mind know that there are other ways of thinking and you can choose your thoughts. This has the effect of expanding the horizon of possibilities instead of narrowing them down in your mind. Besides, in reality, your worth as a person and artist doesn't hang on one drawing. Another thing I realized that, that is that there really is a thing called a learning process and that I don't have to be good right out of the gate. 
This helps me have a much more patient attitude towards myself and the whole process. I'm free to be me right where I am in the process. I'm free to fail and free to succeed. And I'm free to choose how I react to my failures and my success. What I can say here is just in developing some faith in the process and that the whole thing's going to pay off down the road in a few weeks or say a few months and that you will see your progress because you're putting in some work now. It's really helpful when you're studying, practicing and learning. You never reap the rewards in the moment. It's always down the road a bit. So keep that in mind. And that's a good thing because if you had everything you wanted now or it came easy to you, most likely you'd get bored and wouldn't do much of anything. In addition to these suggestions, nothing beats developing a spiritual life to get yourself centered and sorted out. I found this to be very helpful in my own life. Feelings are so subjective. So linking one's identity to something objective, something outside oneself, that has more power than you do and is on your side does a huge amount toward helping keep one's ship upright and sailing straight towards the goal, so to speak, when the inner critic's subjective voice is raging and the emotions are like a stormy sea, making you want to jump ship and give up. Perhaps this speaks to you in some way. If so, maybe you could look into it. If not, feel free to pass. Anyway, this is just my experience with anxiety around making art and how I've gotten through it. And I'd be really curious to know what your experience has been and how you deal with it. So leave a comment down below. Well, this painting's about over and I have to bring it to conclusion, but my anxiety is coming up and not letting me let go. So I decide to put some color accents using the oil painting brush. And I think it's gonna work. One thing about tools, when you have good quality tools, the right tools for the job, it makes the whole thing easier. And Art Rage is such a tool for me. It makes natural media in the digital realm. It looks authentic. It's fast. It's lightweight and super affordable. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description and you can find out more about this awesome program. All right. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you. Follow me on Instagram at drawjuice. And if you're interested in my portrait drawing courses, go over to drawjuice.com. All right, we'll see you in the next one.